Can diabetics eat oatmeal? What are the best oatmeal brands for diabetics? Would eating instant or steel cut make a difference for a great breakfast? Oats are healthy. They're full of fiber. And we will discuss the different kinds of fiber today and why they are so important to us diabetics. So why on earth would a diabetic in particular not be able to eat oatmeal? Or could they if it were prepared differently? But before we begin, let me welcome all the resilient diabetics out there. This is where we turn ordinary struggling diabetics into extraordinarily well-controlled diabetics. If you're new and you don't know who I am, welcome. My name is Jay Sampat and I am an insulin dependent diabetic diagnosed a little over five years ago. So I am the proud owner of a pancreas that seems to have gone on a permanent and lifelong vacation. So not only am I diabetic like you, where we'll be walking the walk and talking the talk together, but I do also have a University of Bachelor of Science degree in Nutrition Dietetics. And that does come in very handy in discussing all the intricacies of being a diabetic. If you like what you see here today and you wanna learn more, then I highly suggest you hit that subscribe button, that like button, and that notification icon, which is that gray bell, so that you don't miss a second of any of those upcoming episodes that will change your life. Prior to becoming a diabetic, oatmeal was for decades my go-to breakfast. It did everything for me as promised, and it was a big part of my diet that helped keep me lean and strong. There you go. Those were my pre-diagnosed pictures. So when I was first diagnosed as a diabetic, oatmeal was still my go-to breakfast, but I quickly learned it had some severe limitations specifically for my own diagnosis. It was no longer giving me the glucose control I really needed as designed anymore. How was I, in my 40s, gonna keep my A1C as an insulin-dependent diabetic in the 5.0 to the 5.5 range and remain healthy, remain strong, and yet continually build upon my physique? Was I asking for the impossible? No, I figured it all out with time and trial and error. It began with my understanding of oatmeal. Here's a picture taken about a month ago after five years of being a diabetic. A detailed look around the internet, including videos, had my mind blown on this subject. That's why we're doing the video today. It's like everyone is repeating the same old and outdated propaganda information on what is healthy for a non-diabetic, as though it applies to us. This one model fits all is the definition of madness. So is oatmeal healthy? Yes, on paper. For some diabetics, maybe. And for other diabetics, no. I will explain. So let's get into the reasons why oatmeal is actually recommended. One, it helps regulate blood sugar thanks to the high fiber content. It's considered a low glycemic index food. It's heart healthy, as they say. It lowers cholesterol. It's been known to reduce the need for insulin injections. That one sent chills up my spine. It's a quick and easy meal. Absolutely, for sure. It's high in fiber. It makes you feel full longer and helps with weight management. Absolutely. It's a good source of long-term energy. And it helps regulate digestion because of the soluble fiber. And we will discuss the difference between soluble and non soluble fiber in just a few seconds. For a non-diabetic person with a healthy pancreas, all that may be true. But what these experts have failed to do is one thing. They did not take into account that each one of us as a diabetic is different. And our responses to carbohydrate rich foods, whether it be oatmeal or even kids cereal for breakfast will have severe consequences. Just because it's heart healthy and contains fiber then it must be good for us as diabetics. So first, let us discuss the differences in fiber and why this is important to us diabetics. Dietary fiber is the edible portion of plant cell walls that are resistant to digestion. In other words, it cannot be absorbed into the bloodstream. And yes, it is an extremely beneficial component of our diets. Not only does it help ward off many diseases, it aids in weight loss by reducing food intake at meals. Fiber-rich foods take longer to digest. You feel full and you feel satisfied. This gradual 
absorption slows the entrance of glucose into the bloodstream, therefore preventing large boluses of glucose and insulin spikes. Remember, true fiber has zero usable calories. The recommended fiber intake is around 20 to 35 grams per day per adult, or around 10 to 13 grams for every thousand calories. The recommended amount should come from a combination of what's known as soluble and insoluble fiber, and each type provides a completely different health benefit for us diabetics. Soluble fiber is basically soluble in water. What does that mean? You gotta think of it kind of like a sponge. When it's mixed with water, it forms like this gel-like substance that swells up. It benefits include moderating blood glucose levels and lowering cholesterol. Good sources of soluble fiber include oats, oatmeal, legumes, which are peas, beans, lentils, barley, fruit, and of course, my staple, vegetables. Insoluble fiber does not absorb or dissolve in water. It just passes through our digestive system close to its original form. Insoluble fiber offers benefits directly related to our intestinal health, including the reduction and the risk of hemorrhoids and constipation. What it does is it basically adds bulk to the stool and helps food pass far more quickly through the stomach and our intestines. Most insoluble fiber that comes in our diets are from the bran layers from cereal grains. So even with fiber, oatmeal, once I was diagnosed, regardless of how I prepared it, whether it be instant, steel cut, would still actually send my sugars into the 200s without insulin. Once I was on insulin, I still had problems. The amount of insulin needed for me to keep in really tight control on a diet based around healthy carbs, I'll put that in quotes, like oatmeal and whole grains at every meal, were actually killing me. It sent my health markers into the stratosphere. So what were my correlations? The more healthier carbs I tried to add into my diet, the more insulin I needed. That related to my cholesterol levels. They went up. My triglycerides went up. My LDL went up. You need to really pay attention to that. So in other words, now more medications like statins are needed for heart protection because you're eating heart healthy foods? That doesn't make a lot of sense. Welcome to the world of diabetes. The idea that are perpetuated on every article that I read were even saying to add skim milk or fruit to the oatmeal. That only makes things worse. Why on earth would a diabetic who needs sugar control add more sugar, fruit, and milk to oatmeal when oatmeal, whether it be steel cut or instant, is essentially sugar? What I tried to do was instead of using milk, I used water and then eggs to limit my sugar intake. But for me, that still led to uncontrollable sugar levels. Oatmeal was off the table for me as my go-to breakfast. You as a diabetic need to do one thing. Test, test, and test some more. Can some diabetics eat oatmeal? Yes, but my recommendations are to limit the carbs on top of the oatmeal. Do what I did. Use water instead of milk, and actually this is really delicious. About two minutes before the oatmeal is done, I would add eggs straight into the oatmeal. That would basically add some extra protein instead of carbs. That would also give it a very nice kind of creamy texture. I honed in to using pasteurized egg whites instead of whole eggs because not only was it a healthier alternative for me, but it would give me faster clearance times based on the insulin I was using. The fat in the eggs was actually causing me to go hypo on insulin later on during the day. Back to test, test, and test some more. Your glucose meter is your life-saving angel in this world of diabetes. Can you eat oatmeal? Your glucose meter will tell you. My personal threshold to test the food is 150 milligrams a deciliter two hours post-meal. Ideally, now that I have everything in line, it's actually around 110 to 120 range. Talk to your doctor and your healthcare team about where they recommend your glucose numbers be post-meal. Hope you learned something really valuable today. In future episodes, I will discuss what I do have for breakfast, or do I even have a breakfast anymore? And if you want to learn more of those extraordinary tips, and this is just a tip of the iceberg, then you're still going to have to hit that subscribe button. In the comments section, I would love to know what you do have for breakfast. Is it a traditional or non-traditional kind of breakfast? Is it oatmeal? 
If so, has it been modified for the best sugar control? The video I will recommend next was actually one of my very first ones. Are smoothies, fruits healthy for diabetics? And I'm going to put that right there for you. It's a must-see for all diabetics. You will be 10 steps ahead of all those struggling diabetics out there if you've seen this episode. It connects food like oatmeal and other carbohydrates and how they are absorbed and utilized. So, have a great and productive day, and we'll see you next week with another new episode. Bye for now.